much. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Vivian and I'm here to present what I already now heard was the scary subject of Asia DevOps and the point that it is not just for developers, although it does have the word dev in the name, so I get the scary part. Just to start off, then there's uh, something from the support, uh, support and uh, the sponsors. Important, without them we wouldn't be here. Uh, once again, all of, all of the sp uh, sponsors to this uh, event, just having here. So now let's let's cut to the chase. And who am I? <laughs> I'm Vivian. I, uh, I uh, I'm talking from Sonnebo, Denmark, uh, in the very very German border side of uh, Denmark, uh, living here and working at a company called Linac AS. I'm 29 years old. I'm my mom and I'm married, so all the important facts you have <laughs> just uh, pointed out here in one go. I'm an IT technical consultant with CRM, Linux AS, working with customizations and uh, configurations, trying to do the most, uh, get most out of application from the non-developer side. So I am trying to do low code, no code solutions rather than uh, going towards finding the helping goal. I was also asked to talk about my most interesting experience so far. It is, it would definitely have to be writing, writing a book about volunteering in the Olympic Games, in the Summer Olympic Games in Brazil, where I was working at, as a press volunteer uh, in the beach volley arena. So knowing the beach volley comes from Brazil, working at that arena uh, on the Copacabana beach, that was just amazing. And being able to write a book and publish a book after it, that I think it takes a lot to top that one. What drives me is uh, Scrum and low code, no code solutions. I am a certified Scrum master, uh, so I am trying to, and when it, hopefully also I'm succeeding to use Scrum in all my projects and everything I do also in the daily life, and also trying to spread the, so, uh, spread the word so that also my colleagues around me and people in Linux know and start using it. So we all can be very combined and just have you, you, unanimous ways of doing things. Just a little fact about me, I originally come from Tallinn, Estonia and speak a few different languages, considering Estonian, Danish and English. Also have learned German and Russian, but definitely not able to keep a conversation in the last two. So those two, I hopefully there will be no questions in that. You can contact to me both in different social medias. I use Twitter most. Uh, it is the, here's my handler. I also am on LinkedIn and uh, have, uh, have my own blog. You can find all the information from the Twitter account. So, but let's get started in the weird and scary world of Asia DevOps. Today I will tell you something about uh, what is DevOps, what is Asia DevOps, knowing that DevOps is actually um, a mindset. Asia DevOps is just a tool to, to provide it. So I'm giving a short intro to it to see and maybe try and demystify the world. And also the next point will be, what can the tool be used for? What are the features? What are the features for business? What are the features for IT? Uh, I do believe that in combination, it works both for different part, uh, aspects of the company, but there are different ways, different uh, de departments can use it. Also business, even though it is mostly marketed as a developer tool. Uh, and then I will also do a demo in the development uh, or in the uh, DevOps system just to for you to get a hands on uh, idea of how the things look in the system, how things can be moved, how things look like also for, from a business perspective, just to see that uh, it's not just all code that you look at, but it's actually quite visually uh, pretty to look at. Uh, and then uh, to finish it all up, then I will con uh, talk about how a non-developer can use this tool. There are different uh, extensions that are worth check checking out 
and uh, different possibilities that even you can use by using the same tools that a developer is using, you can uh, wiggle your way out of uh, having actually to uh, commit code. So you can use, for example, I will take some examples based on Dynamics 365 uh, and solutions and how to automate them and uh, do version controlling and releases on them. So that was a quick intro. Hope, hopefully I haven't lost all of, all of you yet. So let's get started. I'd like to start off with a with a with a nice quote that I found that uh, showing a strong success and visible benefits is key to getting others to agree to try your way of doing things. That is, uh, in my in my world that also is applicable both for the Scrum mindset and for uh, DevOps, because that those are both have been kind of buzzwords or are still some buzzwords that people use everything sometimes uh, in the sentences in their in the speeches without actually uh, making too much sense uh, but they've just been thrown around thrown away but if uh, you start using it and you start seeing the the value in it both from the IT and the business perspective then combining those two words and everything there is no stopping you the it is amazing what you can do with one tool so yes, stepping into the intro of the Asia DevOps. Um, DevOps, let's start with, with just DevOps and then add the Asia to it. DevOps is the union of people, process and products to enable continuous delivery of value to our end users. It is, from, as from the picture you can see, it is a continuous circle or, uh, two circles, one for development and one for operations, where you do your releases, configures, monitoring, remove to plan, create, verify packaging. So it is a continuous workflow that you just keep going uh, for all your, all your processes. The contraction of dev and ops refers to replacing siloed development and operations to create multidisciplinary teams that now work together with shared and efficient practices and tools. Essential DevOps practices include agile planning, continuous integration, continuous delivery, uh, and monitoring of applications. So you have everything in one agile package where people from different uh, sides of the business work together in order to create the continuous uh, flow of, uh, of releasing software. Yes, and one of the tools in order to do that, or one of the tools that I use uh, most prefer, at least for this kind of work, is Asia DevOps. It is a software as a service platform, uh, or also known as SAAS platform from Microsoft that pro provides an end-to-end -end DevOps tool chain for developing and deploying software. And once again, we're throwing away, uh, throwing around the word development, but even if we don't do code, whatever we are putting together is still developing. So, um, so yes, despite uh, being uh, Asia DevOps was first launched in October 2018, so that is a quite a new uh, product on the market. It has actually, it is actually not that new as it has taken over the Visual Studio Team Services system. Uh, and uh, built upon or added features to it. So uh, the Visual Studio Team Services was already launched in 2006, which is a mature product with rich, fe rich feature set that has over 80,000 users at Microsoft. And uh, this has now been taken something that is rather developer based and added upon a layer where you can add both your tasks task management, project management, and also doing a test or testing, automated testing and having your artifacts in it. The picture I'm showing here is uh, is a, basically a front view picture of the Asia DevOps, where on the left side you have your menu bar and then you have, the, right now I have pointed out the work items where you can see everything. 
visually, I think it looks very pretty and definitely understandable for both the business and the IT part of the organization. I will come uh, back to the look and feel of Azure DevOps at the, the demo side of things, where we can also look and see how and what the different uh, different icons, uh, color icons are in front of the titles. Yes. But what can the tool be used for? What are the features? How can it benefit both IT and how can it benefit business? Which parts and services could both uh, IT or uh, business be using? Yes, once again, I'm reusing the, the flow just to point out that it is still a continuous flow with have, adding Azure DevOps services on top. Uh, we, when we take one by one, then we start off with Azure Boards, which uh, works, uh, which is, uh, yeah, for, used for tracking work with Kanban boards, having a uh, backlog items, uh, dashboards, and custom reporting built onto the boards, which you can, be, which will be used in the monitoring and planning. Uh, planning areas of the of the DevOps flow. You have repos also with a longer name called repositories, uh, which is this part is mainly aimed for the developers as you can have all your code and your source uh, and your yeah all your source code and your version control within the same uh, container as you have everything else, you have all your documentation and everything. And the re issue repos or repositories are the part that is in the create uh, verify. Next one on the last list is pipelines. It is something that is basically the, the taking the flow and putting it into action. You add everything from your code to your steps to uh, to your other integrations, your extensions, whatever you need to do in order to automate releases uh, to your system. For example, I work with Dynamics 365 and uh, we are using pipelines to uh, combine uh, solutions and uh, release them into a system uh, in our development production and production systems so that those jobs will be automated and having less human error in it. Everything will, can be topped out with uh, with function or the service called test plans, uh, which help you achieve goals by automating work required to set up testing environments for your software. And you can have, uh, you can use either use the test plans and with those, you can also uh, add automated testing to your pipelines. So everything will be technically tested and uh, e easy to use, or it will be a great handover for the user to start using the system. You know that you haven't, you don't have any small quirks in it. And in the end, we have artifacts, which is also very, uh, very IT and very developer. Uh, developer faced developer yeah meant for developers uh, which is to uh, meant to create host and share packages among your team so you can take all your code packages and then share between the people you work with yes and then when I, when bringing out the business and IT I'm sure pretty, I'm pretty sure every one of you heard me mentioning developing and uh, IT a lot it is still uh, an IT tool as such it's most marketed to IT it has most functionality for people who uh, who use code and uh, are a bit more technical but it also has the great functionality and visual functionality for, for business people to actually have run task management and uh, project management through, uh, through Azure boards uh, using Agile framework. Uh, the way you can have all your sprints and the team and uh, all resources within. So you only need one point, uh, you only have one point of entry to your whole project. 
uh, for the business people, it is also that Azure DevOps has a lot of integration and very good uh, seamless integrations with, for example, Teams and Slack and each uh, service. So the Azure boards, repos, pipelines uh, and so on. All of them actually have individually a lot of extensions that you can add on top. Uh, so you could use uh, different functionality within your Azure DevOps, so you can just run your whole project uh, within one place. Of course, for the IT, you, you have all the services that I just mentioned uh, that is available, and it is, but IT is also uh, <clears throat> divided up to between developers and non-developers. Uh, you, you can be a technical consultant without actually ever writing a piece of code and you can still use Azure DevOps uh, <clears throat> successfully. For example, using uh, the pipelines and uh, Azure boards, you can uh, track your work and also automate the way you do your solutions, the way you uh, import things into the, your, for example, CRM or Dynamics 365 system, and also extract and uh, publish you get you with uh, different uh, extensions and tools. You can also uh, keep track of your online environments and um, and yes, basically run everything, even though you don't use repos or something that has uh, code in it. Yes, uh, the way we uh, were working in uh, Linux or are planning to work with uh, with the business and Asia DevOps is that we will use the Teams integration uh, in DevOps, where we uh, actually have created a dashboard to our CRM team. Uh, that uh, it is a team, a Teams team. <laughs> Sounds funny. <laughs> uh, then uh, that you that we have added the Azure DevOps integration to, that shows a dashboard that we have created in the system, and there it is the possibility for them to see the work items that are assigned to them, see which state they're in, and uh, also if if needed, they can already from their Teams page uh, create a new work item so they don't actually ever have to go into the system if they if they don't want to. Yes. And here and now I've reached the point where things should get interesting. Now, let me see if I can manage to actually share something. Let's see, let's try the demo. It's always interesting to do the demos. Uh, and even though I'm working, uh, I'm doing it from home, then uh, then it's, it's still. <laughs> let me see if I can log in. And once again, it is. Yeah, and that's what I mean. OK, let's just take it from here. Uh, here we have Asia DevOps. I, OK, and what I meant that is very, let me. Let me try and see if. I can manage to get it back. And magic. Let's hope it works now. So this is so welcome to Asia DevOps. <laughs> Already now you can see that uh, it is actually rather visual. It has it has the st statistics of everything that is done with uh, repos. We have some developers on it, so we do have some commits in the system. 
but uh, otherwise you have a first overview and then you start off with dashboards. This is the dashboard you also saw a picture of in the Teams integration and that is uh, a view we have created for the users to have the My Overview so they have the possibility of directly kind of in your face kind of way to see um, what is assigned to them, what it is that they, what is waiting for them and also possibility of creating a new item. And there's also the dashboard of the overall uh, over, oh, overall uh, sprint and project the overview. We don't have that much work in it, so it's looking kind of empty. Apologies for that. But uh, there is a possibility of showing both the sprint burn down and the project burn down charts. So you actually can follow the work that's going on within your project and tasks, see how they're solved and everything already from from the dashboard where you also have the possibility of adding the team capacity. You add the, the hours that the, of the people that are on the project and uh, that will be covered here. And also here you can see the iterations that you set up in the system to see how many days are remaining in this specific iteration and if there is some work started or not. The the dashboards are easy to use in a way that you basically just have a blank canvas with widgets that you can drag and drop. You just drag it and it's there and you, then you configure it by clicking on it. Clicking the settings, of course. And here you uh, add the pipelines you want to use in it, for example, for this widget and then it is here and then it will be populated with data. There are quite a lot of widgets to use between and everything is very visual. There's also a possibility to search for widget or find uh, more uh, on the Visual Studio Marketplace if you cannot find what you're, what you're exactly looking for. Very easy to use in my opinion, it doesn't require any technical knowledge, mostly just drag and drop, see what uh, what looks best to you and uh, and you can do it until either the canvas fills in or you are just you are happy with it. We have also wiki option here where you can add your uh, documentation, both the business and the technical documentation. So you would have everything within your project in one place. You can always access it. Even when your project is done, you always know to go, can go back to it and see, hey, what did we do there? You can uh, go back to your tasks and see, okay, what was the, what were the errors? What were, what was the process that we went through? And you, you can always take, uh, retract your steps from there. For the business part, we did talk about, uh, talk about boards and how uh, that is the tool that is primarily, I would say, using for business that will make sense to have. Uh, they will have uh, first step is the work items, which just give you a gives you a list of all the work items in the system. Uh, you have uh, everything, no matter the relationships, no matter everything. Right now, with work items, it just gives you a, a list of everything that's in the system. With the boards, you have the possibility of actually visualizing your process. You have all the tasks and everything you found in the work items uh, that you can find here added to the board. Also, when there are, for example, relations between different tasks, there are parents and uh, there are added some child relations to it. Then you, then you will see it here visually and you can always check them off if you have, have the, created the task or completed the task. Once again, and uh, when you're done, you can either change the state of it from here with different uh, possibilities. Everything is customizable. That is uh, CAB approved. That is something uh, Linux specific where we have the change advisory board that we have added as a state. 
but you also have the possibility of once again dragging drag and drop. Want to move it to whitelist? You do that. Want to move it back? And you do that. Very easy, very visual, very uh, nice way to use it. One thing I forgot to mention was the was how the work items and everything is uh, categorized in the in the system. Uh, you have when you create your project in uh, in DevOps, you have <coughs> you have the uh, or you have the possibility, you actually have the requirement to choose a method for the project. If you want it to be basic, if you want it to be agile, if you want it to be scrum, uh, they all are rather similar, but have different, uh, different, uh, how, how do I say it, uh, different vocabulary in a way that you have uh, epics for scrum, you have epics and uh, features and the backlog items, your agile, you have user stories. Uh, they are basically all the same, but uh, but different uh, different naming conventions, and depending, of course, how uh, what kind of a process you wish to follow. You have always have the possibility of just showing one type of uh, of uh, projects. You have also the possibility of adding different uh, different settings and iterations here in the project settings. That is that can be, be a bit te technical, but that is also one time you do it and it's done and uh, there you have it. One thing I mentioned about sprints was that you also have the overview of per sprint where you have uh, added your iterations and the tasks that have been in the iterations. You can see one past iteration, you can see the current iteration and you can see the future inter iterations here uh, in Sprint. So you actually have the possibility of going back after the Sprint is over to go back and see, OK, were well, there some tasks that we didn't complete or is there something that uh, needs to be moved to the next Sprint? The same kind of drag and drop fields that you you can add and uh, and customize. One thing is also nice that you have the possibility if you don't like the columns that you have here, if you don't like the name iteration, or if you don't like something, you always have the possibility of modifying, making it your own, and uh, making it work for you. I do think that the standard uh, views and standard columns, everything are rather saying, so they are rather good. It's also not important not to overcrowd something and over customize something. Uh, it kind of loses its touch uh, after after some time, but uh, it is once, uh, like editor said in the previous session, don't be afraid to to, uh, to click things, don't be afraid to move things around. Uh, nothing will break, and if it will, then uh, you will always have a possibility of removing the project and creating it again. It's not worse than that. Uh, that was part. That was the main part for the business. For IT, you of course have repos where you can have all your code uh, and pipelines to to go through. I will take the pipelines uh, at, a, at a bit later uh, point to show that um, what what the, a non-developer can do with this tool. See if I can get back to my slides. Yes, see that was kind of seamless. Yeah, and that was uh, that was that uh, that part of the of the demo. Uh, jumping into the final parts of how can a non-developer use this tool? Normal developer can use the same tools as with, as the developer does with modifications. Of course, they will not have a uh, use of repos. They uh, will, they can use, but they can still use the pipelines and the releases to do, for example, what I use them. Uh, to uh, 
automize your tasks within the Dynamics 365 uh, uh, system to minimize the human errors or to actually yeah, minimize the manu manual work you need to do for uh, exporting and importing and moving from one environment to another where you in Azure DevOps you have the possibility of uh, sorry uh, you have the possibility of uh, adding tests and uh, barriers so nothing will be moved until maybe a person has approved it or it has run th successfully through a test uh, so you would know that whenever something is deployed to either your development, your test or your production system, it is working, it will not break something and the users are able to start using it already uh, after, right after you have, uh, you have uh, deployed it. Yes, as I mentioned, pipelines and releases, using tasks and agent jobs to automate processes and teams integration to follow your work. This is a, a a screenshot of uh, of a release pipeline that uh, that I've created, and the, this is just using the standard uh, functionality of adding an agent job uh, and using uh, an extension from Visual Studio Marketplace called the sorry called Power DevOps Tools. Uh, those are were called called <laughs> Microsoft the CRM tools before. But now with the integration and with the development of Power Apps and Common Data Service, they have been the tool has been renamed to Power App Tools. That tool has the functionality without having to develop anything. You can use the different functions of that tool to create a solution, as you can see in the first in the second step here, and publish customization to your system meaning that you don't actually need to do anything. You're just one time you set a job up that you can run many times and you can add the conditions and it will do it. And that uh, is even though you don't you don't basically develop anything. But uh, this is also something that I thought I will. Show you guys. Uh, within the system. It was here. The way you find or you get to the release pipelines is under the se section pipelines. You have uh, the overall pipelines and you have releases. It is the releases uh, where you can show, for example, uh, the different stages. I have now added a stage called a test and a stage called production, pointing out that the those uh, when it's a green check mark, that means that the uh, that deployment to the test environment was successful. But in the next, it shows that it was it was uh, it has failed, which means that the there was something wrong with the release to production. Either there was an error that made it stop, or something else was wrong. But also, once again, this is very nice and visual also for the non-developer uh, uh, configurer because in the application uh, we don't have the possibility to actually see which solutions have been deployed to which uh, environments that means that uh, using this tool we actually get a nice overview already what has been deployed to where and the releases are also you okay, know, of course, I took one that has completely failed. <laughs> Maybe not the best thing to show. Uh, let's take one that has both uh, failed and succeeded. And everything also here you can see is very visual. You can drag and drop, you can uh, redeploy, you can see the locks, you click on it, you can see the steps it has gone through uh, and what has happened to it. You can also look at it, see the log. Uh, it will go. It will actually. It will show you step by step of the of the steps it had done. It has run the tool installer. It has it has created the solution. 
it has published customizations, and it has finalized the job. It will only do it when it when it's successful. Otherwise, uh, for a job where you, <clears throat> something has gone wrong, then you can quickly quickly see that which parts of the job actually was successful and which part of the uh, of the job was, has, has an error. And it also comes with an error code, uh, not code, but error yeah, definition of what, uh, what the system it has been missing or what has been wrong. So you have the possibility of going back, editing the release or editing your functionality and then rerun it already from the same uh, same place that you that you had before these releases were of course manually triggered but you always ha also have the possibility of having them uh, part of a pipeline which can also automatically trigger the releases if you set them up like that yes now this got <laughs> a bit technical but Still not a developer technical, but uh, but a bit technical. But the, the, those tools, the Power Power Apps tools that also you can see on the picture here, is something that is very valuable for every uh, Dynamics 365 and uh, or uh, customizer slash configurer who actually doesn't know how to write a line of code themselves can just use those tools that have been coded by a uh, by great developer uh, and uh, just use the functionality, run it, and you, and you can automate your releases. Extensions, that is uh, something that uh, they're very, that they have, Azure DevOps is excelling on, I might say, because it has a lot the recent uh, extensions that I have been talking about in this uh, session has been Power DevOps tools and Teams integration. And here is the link to the Visual Studio Marketplace. And this really is a marketplace. <laughs> it has everything. It has basically everything to what, what you could want and need. The neat part of it is that it's also divided up with the different by the different services of Azure DevOps, you have extensions for the artifacts part. You have uh, extensions for Azure Boards, where you have Excel. You have delivery plans. You can visualize your things. You have analytics, one Teams, calendars. So you can add all of those extensions to your boards to be able to make your project management even better and even uh, more efficient. <clears throat> and here you can also get the widgets. If you couldn't find something in the dashboard section, you can also uh, see if you can find something from here. You have extensions for pipelines, you have for repos, test plans, you have everything. This is truly a, a <clears throat> playground for anyone who wants to use Azure DevOps and uh, also they have the most popular section where you can see what people have uh, have the downloaded most used most and also this week i can see that asia asia boards and teams integration is trending so there are people starting to use a one-way entry so teams into integrating with all uh, other office uh, 365 uh, products and um, I only find it uh, find it great, so that people soon don't need to have eight hundred different links and uh, yeah uh, bookmarks on their browser. They can just have the one point of entry teams where they can then see everything they uh, they want. Uh, let's see if that is willing to read. It was one thing I. One last thing I wanted to show was actually the the Teams integration. If it's allowing me to do that, it is. Hopefully. <laughs> yes, it is. If you have many accounts, it is very difficult. No. 
but basically uh, what I wanted to show was that now we can see this is the team's uh, page. You have your channel, you have your team channel, the general channel or whatever you call it, where you can have posts, files, a wiki, and then you can have uh, a CRM team overview where you can add even more integrations. As we saw before, forms and sway, there is the same way you can find Azure DevOps as the first thing here. Yes. But that was uh, that was it for me. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, we'll take it from there.